Hi everyone! Today we are talking about marking your music and this video is going to be specific to vocalists. So if you actually have an instrument that is not your voice, you're definitely going to want to check out my video from last week on how to practice in small sections. I'm going to put a link up at the top of the video. And today we're really going to dive into what it means to mark your music for vocalists. This is kind of one of those things that has multiple meanings depending on the context that you're using it in. So the first thing that people can be talking about when they're saying, okay, let's mark your music is literally what it sounds like and actually taking notes in the music to mark certain reminders for yourself or to circle certain things that you are maybe missing or to just put in certain notes about making sure that you are focusing on a retardando or a dynamic change or a breath mark or pronunciation, a certain note, all of those different types of things. The second way people tend to talk about the term marking your music is in reference to auditioning or working with an accompanist either in or outside of an audition. So um, typically when you audition, you are not doing a full four minute song. That's hardly ever what happens. Instead, what you are asked to do is to prepare an audition cut. And this is usually a 16 bar selection from a song of your choice or from the director's choice. And that is what you are asked to perform for your audition, usually with one or two other things as well. You might also have to do a specific music marking for an accompanist, again, either for an audition or for something else where you are doing not the full version of the song, but just a smaller selection, in which case you would be marking in certain notes for the pianist, things like, you know, start here or take the repeat or skip the first ending, anything like that. But we're really talking today about the third meaning of the term marking your music, which has to do with vocal health. I talk a lot about how the voice is actually an instrument and how singers are not less than or not as important as other musicians who play an instrument other than their voice. So that's not really what I'm wanting to get into today. Instead, I wanna focus on the other side of that, which is that yes, your voice is an instrument, but it's also part of your body. And that means that you are limited with a finite capacity as to how long you can actually use it and get healthy results. If you're only used to running a quarter mile at a time and then you decide one day you just wake up and, and go to a 5k and want to try and run the whole thing, you're not going to be super happy with how that goes. And in the same way, when we are talking about vocal stamina, we don't want to operate under the assumption that we can just kind of hum to ourselves a few minutes a day and then magically be able to do an hour's worth of heavy lifting, right, um, by singing through a bunch of really demanding music for an entire hour and then expect that everything is going to be all hunky-dory. No, if you do that, you're probably going to end up with some signs of vocal fatigue and that can be anything from feeling hoarseness and raspiness to specifically noticing that you have lost certain notes in your range or potentially even losing your voice altogether. Either way, you're probably going to notice that by the end of that hour that you are feeling really tired and not wanting to use your voice for a long time after that. And that's not really the best way that we can take care of that instrument when it comes to taking care of the body. Remember, you only get one voice, so we want to make sure that everything we do is really giving us the best success possible while also taking care of our instrument, especially if you're taking voice lessons because that probably means that you really like your voice <laughs> and you like using it. Singing is important to you. It means something. It's a way for you to express yourself and to make something beautiful that's bigger than yourself. And so, especially for us singers, we wanna make sure we are doing everything in our power to get the best results and also take care of our instrument. And this is where marking your music can really come in handy because when we talk about it in terms of vocal health, it's basically the idea that we're reducing our acoustic output or our volume and our energy so that we can continue to work on our singing longer 
and have fewer signs of vocal fatigue. So I'd like to get into a couple different things that you can do to mark your music and use this technique to your advantage. And then I want to go into a little bit more detail about all the ways this is actually going to be really helpful to you as a vocalist and as you are working on improving your singing. So the first thing that you can do to mark your music is to sing everything one octave lower than it's actually required of you in the song. This is typically helpful when you are singing a song that is a little bit higher than where you're most comfortable singing. Particularly if you are singing something written in a soprano or tenor range, and even more specifically soprano one or tenor one, this is going to be a very helpful strategy for you to help reduce that vocal fatigue and improve your stamina over the course of your practice session. So there's another word that I want to talk about here briefly for a moment, and that is tessitura. And tessitura is another one of those words that has several different connotations, but I'm using it in the sense of defining the range of notes that a song sits in primarily because there's a big difference between having to pop up to one high C at the very end of a song versus having to sing 85% of the song within a five note range of that high C, right? One is gonna be a lot more demanding than the other. And so tessitura is just explaining, okay, look, here is the range of notes where the majority of your song is going to fall in. And you'll have some outliers maybe on either side, but most of the range sits right here. Now, if that range is considerably high, it's going to be more demanding than if it sits in a range that is more comfortable and natural for you, maybe towards more of your lower register. So if you are working on a song that has a fairly high tessitura, or for some people, this could even be a fairly low tessitura, in which case you would want to sing everything a little bit higher if that's more comfortable for you. Either way, we're taking a song where the tessitura is a little bit more outside of our comfort zone, and we are changing that range to be in a place that's more comfortable and easier for us to sing. And typically that does look like bringing the song down by an octave. Another method that you can use is to simply reduce your volume. Now, this does not mean reduce your technique, <laughs> okay? A lot of the time we can kind of interchange those two. They are absolutely not the same thing. What I mean by that is we can sing at a softer volume without compromising, for example, how we are mentally engaging with what we are doing, right? So softer does not mean on autopilot mentally, it doesn't mean lazy. Um, softer also does not mean that we abandon all ideas of how we are thinking about our posture and our breathing and the amount of breath support that we are using to sustain certain notes. Anytime we are singing higher, longer, or louder, we need a little bit more energy and a little bit more breath pressure. But just because we are reducing our volume doesn't mean that all technique goes out the window. Instead, we are just modifying so that things are easier. So if you find yourself trying to mark your music by reducing your volume, but noticing that you are getting lazy with your technique, then that is something to definitely avoid because that's not the goal. Instead, the technique is just designed to lighten the load on your voice so that if you were singing full volume and maybe you could only get through the song twice before you just felt exhausted, well, by singing at half volume, maybe now you can get through the song three or four times and you still feel like you have a little bit left in your tank. So our focus is really to protect your voice, get the most out of your practice time, and get to the end of your practice without feeling like you are completely spent and wondering, hmm, that didn't feel so great. Hopefully I didn't damage anything because who wants to be stuck with that after the end of a really draining practice session? Nobody that I know, so there we go. So then the third technique is pretty much a combination of the two. So putting your notes in an octave that feels more comfortable than the octave that the notes are written in, as well as reducing your volume so that, again, you're really just lightening the load on your voice and able to do more. Here's where this really helps you. If you are learning a difficult or a new passage of a song, 
a lot of the time we just need some repetition for that to really sink in. However, if you are completely wiped out after two repetitions, it's going to be really challenging to learn that song. It's going to take quite a long time and you are probably going to hate it. And that is not the goal, right? Anytime that I am assigning music or giving students something that is designed to introduce them to a new genre or stretch them in a new direction or increase a little bit of strength and agility in a part of the range that is a little bit weaker. The goal is not that you end up hating the music, right? So if that's the only thing that comes out of it, I think I did a pretty bad job. Instead, it's my hope that by using some of these other techniques, that new and unfamiliar music can end up still being enjoyable. And one way that that happens is by maximizing your practice time so that it doesn't take you six months to learn a song just because you can only sing through it a couple times a day and that's all you got. So ultimately, if you are trying to learn a song that has either a certain passage or the tessitura of the entire song is outside of your normal comfort zone in your range, marking your music can be a really helpful strategy. And there are other ways too that you can actually practice and expedite your learning process without just powering through the entire song over and over and over again. We don't really tend to like mindless repetition. That's not generally something that gives you the best results, but that is actually going to be a future video, alternate practice methods for when you are just looking for something different than going through the song over and over again, or you aren't able to do that due to illness or time constraints or you know not having access to a space where you can really practice freely in all of those things we're going to touch on in the future but i hope that this has been helpful marking your music can really make a big difference in how you go about your practice time preserve your voice improve your your vocal stamina over time and ultimately improve your vocal health by reducing the amount of work that your instrument has to do just to get through one practice session, particularly when you're working on a difficult passage or learning a new piece, and especially one that has a more uncomfortable tessitura at first. But that's all I've got for today, so consider giving Marking Your Music a try the next time it is applicable to you, and I will see you next time.